welcome to Double O Deep Dive, uh, Pop Culture Pro's home for 007 James Bond. Uh, I want to thank everyone. Before I introduce myself and my co-host, I want to thank everyone who's joining us. Uh, if you're joining us on YouTube, if you're joining us on uh, Spotify, so you can get our podcast afterward. If you're joining us uh, live on uh, the Facebook group or Twitter, thank you for plugging in to uh, join us in our deep dive of Pierce Brosnan. Uh, I am your host, uh, Agent 006, Jason Fischetic, Uh here to get down and dirty for some golden eye with me as always. Uh, 006 Ginny. Uh, oh, oh, 007. There you go. Oh, I changed double myself. Eight. I'll be 007 this time around. Ooh, all right. You'll be 007 this time around. <laughs> How's We're it going? Eight, nine. <laughs> I, lo- I love it. I love it. How's it going, Ginny? It's going good. It's really good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's Tuesday. It's not Monday, but it's Tuesday, and uh, it's one day closer to the weekend. We're creeping, we're creeping closer to the week. I can feel it. We're almost there. Closer to that weekend, and like I'm at work, and I'm supposed to have Regents Week this week, which is I'm just supposed to be like proctoring tests, but they canceled it, and so the kids are coming for classes to take a test that doesn't affect their grade. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure they're happy. I'm sure they're so happy. And like my kids are awesome and they're not complaining. They're kind of just like, all right, we know it's not you, mister. We know it's yeah. the system. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so so that's my week and I'm just getting ready to get through it. Um, but yeah, with us as always, uh, joining us, the best damn quartermaster on this side of MI6, uh, E, E Branch, Ed Camus. How are you, sir? What is up, everybody? What's going on? Can't wait to talk about like uh, some more good Bond again. Yeah. After, you know, yeah. After last week, uh, you know, with Jimmy Bond. So I'm glad we're back to James. Oh my gosh. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. We yeah, called Jimmy a lot. I went Jimbo. a week without remembering Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. And you had to bring him back a whole week. <laughs> I'm really the only one who found any value in that, aren't I? <laughs> I'm glad that I saw it. It was educational. It was very yes, educational. Exactly. That's the, my work here is done. Then that's all I yeah. wanted was to to enlighten people that there was a world of Bond before Connery. Jason, you showed me a, a Bond I've never seen before. All right, mission successful. There we go. All right. right, my work here is done. I'm going back to my home planet. Ginny, you take over. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My planet needs me now. <laughs> that's right. That's it. That was it. I couldn't think of it. My planet needs me now. <laughs> Speaking of, I think at some point I'm going to ask you guys to watch the uh, James Bond parody episode of The Simpsons. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Is yeah, it the, 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 it's, uh, it's the one with Hank Scorpio. Scorpio, Hank Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, uh, Homer, if you could kill some of these guys on the way out, I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> um, but that's in the future, and in the present here, we have Goldeneye, our first uh, James Bond movie of the Pierce Brosnan run which came out in 1995 right uh Ed you would tell me that before yep. we got on the, the air um of course we're going to talk about this at some point famously spurned uh the like f- groundbreaking game the N64 Goldeneye which you know in, in we used to set the law in Ginny's house apparently as a yeah. kid <laughs> yeah sure would sure would um but before we get into this movie, like, I want to just sort of talk to you guys about, like, your thoughts going into Pierce Brosnan, like, uh, and I know we did this with Craig, too, like, what are you kind of looking forward to? What are you dreading? What are you, uh, you know, what are your just general thoughts on the your previous encounters with the Brosnan run? Uh, so, Ginny, I'm going to ask you to start only because I have a, a question for you before you do it. For England, Ginny? For England, James. <laughs> I love that. I was and that. Oh man, that was also. I realized my sister and my brother were watching Google and I like a, a year ago or a few months back, and then we used to quote that to each other all the time for England. So every time it came in, I was like, oh yeah, I was like, I like at the end, it was like the, for England, James. Um, oh, it's such a great line. I love. I this is my this is my Bond. I grew up. This is the one I grew up with. Like this is probably my first my first ever James Bond movie, just because. My parents never filtered what we watched. And so, like, if we accidentally, you know, watch this movie. But it was James Bond, so it was PG-13. It was normal. But there's, like, traumatizing stuff in this. Um, but this is my, like, 90s Bond. And and then, again, it was only till like, middle school, 
high school that we would binge those marathons on like Spike TV and uh, whatever, whatever the channel like that would have them. Oh, but TNT? With, TNT. With TNT mm-hmm. for a while? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, this is like my kind of bond that was always on TV and like that would come out in the theater releases were like, this is the big bond. This is the hot star, Pierce Brosnan, any any sort of spinoff movie with him was like, mm, he's, you know, he's our bond. He's, he's the bond right now. So, yeah. Awesome. So this is ground zero for you. I, yeah. And I love, like, I just love Pierce Brosnan. And I just kind of, there's a, such a comfort with all these movies for me that, you know, it's still modern enough that it's not um, off-putting or like totally out of date for me. And there's still, you know, a lot of, you know, you know, modern actors that I know, but yeah. Yeah. Very comforting. Awesome. Awesome. Ed? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like Brosnan's run as Bond. I mean, like I had said previously, um, I don't love all the movies that he's in. This is my favorite of the of the Brosnan run. Um, and I saw most of these in the theater as well. And I and I think I said, too, like License to Kill was actually the first Bond movie I saw in the theater. <clears throat> um which I was way too young to see at that, that time. Anyway, but whatever. Yeah, what were you, like, seven or eight? <laughs> Something like that, because I, I'm thinking back to my cousin. Dark. Yeah, my cousin Michael took me to see that, but it was just always, like, my father and, and his father are the ones who kind of, like, put me on to Bond as a kid. It was always, like, Sean Connery and, and Roger Moore, and, of course, I'm too young to, be like, really carefree, and I'm just like, let's see the car and, you know, whoever's Bond, and that was pretty much the movies for me. Um but yeah, as I, and he was just like, oh yeah, you like James Bond, so come on, let's go. I want to go see License to Kill. Come with me. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing this in the theater where, like, we were in high school, and you know, I remember seeing this and Tomorrow Never Dies, and uh, I think the only one I didn't maybe I skipped was uh, The World Is Not Enough. Okay. And that was the only one I didn't see in the theater. And I don't recall why. It wasn't like I was just avoiding it. It just didn't happen for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, no, I love I love Rosamund as Bond though, like regardless of whatever it is. Uh, and unfortunately, I was telling Jason I missed the GoldenEye N sixty four craze because God. I I got it late. I got the system late, and everyone was already <laughs> raving about it. And I know it makes no sense since I love Bond, but then I'm just like, all right, I'm not gonna go look for this old game now. I'm just gonna keep it moving. I'm just gonna have to just deal with it, and that's it. Uh-huh. Uh, but I wish I did. But I, I did say I got reloaded. Golden Eye reloaded. Not quite the same, but you know, try to recapture the magic a little. It bit. was the moment. Yeah, yeah, it was the moment. I, 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 I had missed it. Um, but yeah, no, this was this is a uh, one of my probably yeah, probably one of my favorite runs of Bond. So I'm excited for it. Yeah, no, for sure. So like my Brosnan. Here's here's my thing with Brosnan. He's my second favorite Bond, and I still it's hard because I actually really do love Craig and I. I really do. I love almost all of his movies, but I have this nostalgic emotional connection to to this Bond because he's not my first Bond. And I wasn't even that crazy about these movies when I saw them in the theater. It's kind of on rewatch that I appreciate them more. Mm -hmm. Uh, But these are the only, not the only, but these are the first Bond movies I saw in the theater. So Goldeneye, this movie, is the first one I saw in the theater. And I remember sitting there going, oh my God, it's Bond in the theater. And uh, and I actually, when I saw this theater, I actually really loved it. And I still do. Uh, You know, not going to bury the lead there. It's one of my favorites. Um, And then I saw all of them afterward. Uh, of the Brosnan era, even like Die Another Day. And I think Die Another Day is might be why I kind of like disengage from the franchise for a bit. Um, and I don't actually hate that movie. We'll get to it when we get there. I just think it's kind of ridiculous. And I, you know, I'd, I'd kind of gotten like sick of this incarnation of Bond at that time, but it has nothing to do with Brosnan. Um, and, and I think like even, even if I wind up hating every movie but this one, uh, I, he'll still be my second favorite because I just love him as Bond. Like having nothing to do with the story of the movie he's in, he just for me embodies that character in a way that, like, even in some ways Connery didn't doesn't. Okay, I feel yeah. that. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, because he's got. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'd say this could be our Batfleck for Bond because no. we both lo- we both love Batfleck. But we oh. admit it's not, yeah. not the best movies. Right, 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 right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I see. Yeah, right. we, can, we can divorce it. We can separate the two. Exactly. So. Exactly. And and that's the thing. It's like when, when Brosnan's on screen, same with the Batflex stuff. When he's on screen, I'm there. But when I think about it and he's not on screen, 
you know, that's not in this movie, but but other movies, that's where it kind of gets dicey. And I'm I'm kind of thinking of Die Another Day because outside of this one, Die Another Day is the one I've seen the most of this run. And I think I I don't know, maybe it was on cable a lot, and I just maybe. caught it, or I don't know why that that was it. But I've seen that way more than I should have. <laughs> so it's like I don't actively, I do not actively seek that one out, or like even if that's on TV, I'm like I don't need to this. I don't need this right now. I don't need. It's, Every it's, time it's, I hear the title, I picture him like surfing on the that yeah, wave I, thing and I'm like, oh my god, what the hell was I thinking? Well, <laughs> I, I, I cringe every time. Yeah, but Halle Berry's awesome in it. Yeah, she is. Yeah. 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 But, uh, alright, so let's let's dive into Mission Goldeneye. And I gotta, I wanna, I'm gonna start this off differently. I was kind of inspired last week. I forget which one of you said it. But you said something that inspired me and like 20 minutes before I got on, I had this idea. That's why I didn't run it by you. So we're workshopping here, guys. We're workshopping. Uh, but you, someone had said that the the Radiohead Spectre, the only reason it wasn't chosen to be the Spectre song was because it wasn't written for the movie. Right? I think I had found that because I was actually researching it while we were all, literally okay. in the middle of the show. I was <laughs> researching it because I had to know. <laughs> so which sort of begs the question, like, so we're not begs the question, but, but, but sort of says that, all of these songs are written for the movie. So I, I want to start off talking about the song Goldeneye. But before we talk about if we like it or not, I'm just going to read a couple of lyrics. I, and I want okay. you guys to tell me what the fuck this has to do with the sure, movie. Okay? Sure. <laughs> um, I'll do my best. Uh, <clears throat> see reflections on the water. See him surface in every shadow. On the wind, I feel his breath. Goldeneye, I found his weakness. Golden eye, he'll do what I please. Golden eye, no time for sweetness, but a bitter kiss will bring him to his knees. And it goes on from there. Uh, you know, I could read more, but you guys have heard the song. So what, what does the song have to do with the, the plot of this movie? You say that, and I started this movie going, I love this song. This is like top, top oh, same. five, top ten Bond songs for me. And I was, because I was, all of the Daniel Craig songs have like great lyrics. They tie into the plot seemingly, like even that last one. I was like, that Billie Eilish song, you got to give it kudos, because it, it's very much his relationship mm -hmm. with um, Dr. Swan. And I listened to this one. I was like, and the wait a second. I was like, Golden Eye is the, it's the thing. It's the missile. It's not a person. It's not a gun. It's not a, like right. a villain. And then, and it's very like romantic and seductive. So I say it's a brilliant song. And I, 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 I will, I'll, it's the relationship with Alec and Bond. Maybe we don't know. We can. We can all right, all right. You, We can, you know, assume. So, so you're saying that maybe. Alec or Alec is writing this or singing this song to Bond, and Goldeneye is the metaphor for their relationship, or or it's saying? his love with lust, with the power of of getting this oh, done, okay. right? Oh, okay. So he's singing to the power. It's a metaphor. It's a, All right. <laughs> no, the no, hey. And the language of love is a is a. Am I passing as a teacher with this pass in your English class? Ginny, you get a hundred right now because I put you on the spot with no warning. I was going to ask you this ridiculous question, and you gave me something that I'm going. Oh, okay, I can see that. Uh, that works. <laughs> I'll take a C. I'll take a C. A C uh, plus. <laughs> No, all right. Uh, thanks, G. I actually didn't expect anyone to really answer that. I couldn't answer that. Um, but you know what? Now we're going to do it. This is how we're going to start our movie every week. Oh, we're going to talk about the song like this. Um, Ed, you got me thing? <laughs> I mean, how do I follow that up? Uh, yeah, it's a good point. Uh, I'm invincible. <laughs> all right, there we go. <laughs> One That's it. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need. Yep. Uh, just you know, be careful that uh, that, that but, nitrogen behind you. <laughs> oh, it might happen. Who knows? <laughs> you just got some. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I I I got nothing about how it connects to the movie, but I love this song. And I, Ginny, you had said it's like top top for you. Me too. I think this is up there with the Shirley Bassey stuff, yeah. which is I think the best. Um, I listen to the song a lot. It's actually on my Spotify, having nothing to do with James Bond music. I just really like it. It's Tina Turner. I mean, yes. geez. You know who wait, Bono and the Edge wrote it. I know. I just noticed. I just that saw. I just night. saw that too this time. I know. Like, I it sounds a little bit when you. I feel like the orchestrations kind of give me "Hold Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me, Thrill Me" vibes. Yeah, yeah. From true. the Batman Forever soundtrack. <laughs> uh, which will you will be uh, on our episode? This I'll be Saturday. crazy, hardcore. 
Wow. So I, it just, I was like, I, I like me and my husband didn't know that. We're like, did you know? And he's like, no. I was like, this is a weird fact. I didn't realize that either until I was watching it last night. Damn it, I forgot about that song for a minute that was connected to Batman Forever. Shit, we have like so many, so much music to play Saturday. Yeah. We have so, so oh, much so music. Much. Let's just, hey, let's not talk about the movie. Let's just chill out and listen to some music. Talk I'm about talking the about music. The soundtrack. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Ed, what did you think about, uh, where, do, where do you put this song? Like, what's your opinion of it? Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I think it's a really cool song for the movie. Like, it's got the look to it. I mean, sorry, it's got the sound of like a Bond opening theme. Uh, I did not dive into the lyrics too much. I kind of just was going with it. Um, yeah, it, ha- it has a, a real good sound for the movie. Uh, as a song on its own, I would probably wouldn't catch myself listening to it, yeah, seeking it out. But uh, yeah, I think it works for what it's supposed to be. So it's written for the film. It works for the film. Now, the lyrics, just don't dive into them too much. Fair enough. Fair so enough. I, and, and- I nothing. You know, we're going we're to put the GoldenEye lyrics to bed, but but we're going to get into more lyrics as we go along, just because I think this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so cold open, guys. Is This this is an exciting cold open. Uh, we get, first we get Bond walk out and, he, you know, the iconic shooting the sniper, but it's a more 90s, like, techno Bond. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I was thrown off about. I completely forgot that they changed up the the the, the song for this. Um, and then uh, you open up at mission one of GoldenEye sixty four, where Bond has to because uh, <laughs> this is how I think about this movie, guys. Because I've played the hell out. Of, I have played that movie more than I've watched every James Bond movie. Like, like oh, yeah. it, it, its entirety, because I would spend like I almost I I failed a whole bunch of cl- almost failed a whole bunch of classes my first year of college because of that game. Because <laughs> the characters, as the characters for me, every character, because you could play every stupid character in this yes. movie as a character in the game, and there was so like non and so many Russians, so many Russians, so many Russians, <laughs> uh, and they were all trying to get somewhere fast. <laughs> all right, I'll see myself out now. Um, no, but so we we get this really exciting cold open. Bond like has to go. He has to bungee jump, and and I want to yeah. say this. And this is the first instance I noticed. I never noticed it before. But guys, this is the most '90s movie that is ever '90s. Mm-hmm. Like bungee jumping, hacking. Like <laughs> yeah, hacking. there's so much '90s in here that I just never clocked because it was the '90s and I was. <laughs> <laughs> but but Bond bungee jumps off this dam, which I think is an awesome shot of him going yeah, down, yeah. and then gravity kind of gives him a little eases up on him and he very slowly gets to the ground and shoots the uh the the grappling hook and that's how he kind of gets himself on the ground i know that that doesn't make sense physics wise but i think it looked awesome <laughs> it did look really cool yeah. <laughs> um uh and then let's see let me see do any miss anything else before i uh yeah and then okay so then he infiltrates the uh, the base that he's going down to, which is uh, the second stage of the game. Uh, And that game, and I will never forget this, that game starts where you are up in the bathroom in the freaking, uh, yeah. the, t- the ducts, and yeah. you can like beat the hell out of that guy who's on the bowl, and he's actually sitting on the bowl. And we used to just um, hang out in the bathroom sometimes too. That was also because sometimes we wouldn't even play the game. We would just like walk around locations and mess around because there's like <laughs> wow. toilets. You can hang out in the toilets for fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's true. Um, and then pretty much it's him and Alec Trevelyan. You meet Alec Trevelyan who's 006. He becomes the villain later. Uh, they are doing this whole mission where they're sabotaging whatever the Russians are doing at this dam. Uh, or we meet Ormov, who's like the head henchman. Uh, Trevelyan gets captured. They execute him. James Bond uh, does this brilliant move where he hides behind propane tanks. Mm-hmm. And I love that scene because he's just like, slow, slow, slow. <laughs> and they fire at him and he just stops and he waits for Ormov to execute the guy and just goes, slow, slow. Uh, slow. Um, so before before I move on from there, because it's a big big, there's a lot going on in this. Uh, uh, Ed, anything anything you want to talk about about uh, this part of the opening, uh, the opening uh, cold open rather? Sorry. I mean, the genius move about him going behind the propane tanks uh, seemed like it would be out of like a spoof. <laughs> yeah, yes. uh, at the speed he was going at. Yes. Uh, but it, it, as smart as it is, that's kind of what it reminded me of. It'd be something like that. Like, um, 
but it, it was you know it was really smart and you know um i was i well i have further questions about those some of the plot with this you know connected to like when he gets shot and yeah Obviously. Yeah, th th there was a couple of things I was a little questioned about. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, no, it was, it was pretty exciting. And then, you know, the chase after that and stuff. And, you know, so pretty, it was a pretty solid opening. Yeah, no, I, I like that. And then he, uh, and then Ginny, I'll ask you in a minute. I just want to further this a bit. And then he does this thing where he sort of gets to the conveyor belt. I know because there's a conveyor belt that goes outside, which I never actually questioned why, but. <laughs> There is, and he kind of he throws himself down, fires a whole sp spray of bullets, rains hail upon the the Russian soldiers, and then does another physics defying thing where he catches this plane where he literally drives a motorcycle over a cliff and dives down and somehow, despite the fact that objects fall at the same uh, height or the same the same velocity regardless of uh, weight. Um, and that thing was heavier so that Bond would have more wind resistance. There's no way he could catch up to it. He catches up to it, pulls it up, and flies to safety while the dam blows up. Ginny, what did you, how did you feel about that? I just, because I, you know what, I don't, I remember, I don't have this as like an iconic opening for me in a weird way. There's like too many other moments in this movie that really have my attention that I'm like, oh, and remember this from this, you know, the, like this, this experience, you know, this fight scene, this, this moment. But the opening, I was like, I forgot he bungee jumped off of, that's like the first thing. Yeah. And I, I was like, what a great way to like, you're jumping into a new bond and a new, you know, a new life. And that's kind of, and that's pretty cool. And that also is just like, it's such a good stunt. It's on film. It's like old nineties. We don't have, I mean, yeah, Marvel is very CGI based, but we don't, this, this is a stunt. That's like a proper yeah. stunt happening. Um, that's really cool. I really love that. It makes me want to bungee jump. makes me want to try it once in my life. Maybe. <laughs> awesome. You know what? It makes me want to be there to see you do it and buy you a drink after. <laughs> I know. And me screaming, not looking cool at all. <laughs> down. No, no, no. Here's the thing. You look cool no matter what you look like because you have the nerve to bungee jump. You, if, if you said to me, Jason, I'll give you $10 billion and, and, and a genie like <laughs> that will grant you three wishes, if you bungee jump, I'd go, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Yeah, Ed, would you bungee jump? Is that something you do? Like, For $10 billion, like, you were just saying a shitty <laughs> question. Yeah. All right, fair enough. But I mean, without the money, without the monetary thing, would you bungee jump? Uh, probably not. I don't know. I mean, maybe if I had a couple of drinks or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll do anything. I'll puke afterwards. But um, not, I wouldn't plan to do it. I've All never right. done it. So. <laughs> but if it just happened, <laughs> God, it just happened. We're going bungee jumping. You want to come? <laughs> that that's how I've done some things. You kind of just roll with it and be like, "Hey, listen, whatever." We're bungee jumping. Let's go. Let's bungee jump. <laughs> All right, we're doing this now. We're we're, we're bond did it. in this shit. We're bond, bonding bonded it. in ninety five. I have to do yeah. it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so this this cold open before it moves on, uh, it gives us the first um, the first Q branch item because now we are yeah. in. I think this is like prime yeah. gadget mm -hmm. bond. Like even more so than Roger Moore and uh, Connery, this is like this is where the gadgets are, and we get that grappling hook, mm -hmm. which I thought was very Batman. It's probably the most understated thing he has, uh, <laughs> like gadget wise. Gadget wise, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I just wanted to point that out there before we get to the credits. Uh, so the intro, of the credits, um, it's pretty much like uh, you know, it, it's it's. Brosnan shooting and there are women. I, I literally just take notes because these things are all like fever dreams. So I just <laughs> yeah. take notes. Um, and then women dancing and then there's fire and some of them are blowing smoke out of their the mouth. The gun and comes out gun, of the woman's mouth. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the gun comes out of the mouth and there's the two heads. And, and you know, please just kick in here because obviously I'm, <laughs> I'm just... If, like, I, if I was to tell somebody to watch a Bond opening that just kind of is like a generic Bond opening, what you would imagine a Bond opening is... <laughs> This would be it. This is it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Like, just watch the Golden Eye open. You kind of got the gist of what a Bond <laughs> thing is is supposed to be. You know, it's along true. with the like the ordering the drink and saying, you know, Bond, James Bond, the mm -hmm. opening. You got this is it. Baccarat. I agree. Baccarat. Oh, Baccarat. Yeah. We got yeah, we get the Baccarat on this. Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. This is like this is your quintessential Bond opening. Yeah. Um, I actually do like that they're destroying the statues of uh, the old Russian mm. uh, oligarchy. Mm. I thought that was interesting, and you're know, dancing on the chain and sickles because this movie is kind of like a sort of like what 
trying to bring the franchise back to the Cold War. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I, I like that. So what you guys think of the, So, Ginny, what would you think of the, the opening? Because Ed, Ed has pretty much succinctly told us perfectly what this opening was. So now it's your turn to follow him. <laughs> just, just the just the I liked it a lot. And again, I think you're 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 both of your statements, but yours about just like some of the images where it's just like and I can clearly see the models faces in this, like the music mm. musical opening, which I always find is I like them. I like my ladies in shadows. I don't know how to say that. I like my women's in silhouettes and just like no, no quite faces, like dark faces and like a little bit of a outline. Um, but yeah, so you're, you know, it, it, it looks great. It's very classy. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I love this opening. Love this song. I think it works. And then we get right into the movie and guys, 16 minutes into this movie, you know what happens? I clocked it last night. 16 minutes. You know what happens? Oh, Him and the psychiatrist on. get it oh, on. Oh, Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure do. They right? sure do. They sure 16, do. 60 minutes of this movie and Bond's already knocking boots, guys. Like, we didn't see this in the Craig run. No. Craig, no, Craig, no, Craig had very little sex in and, his run. And you know what my husband said? My husband was watching the last, like, 30 minutes of this movie. And he goes, you know, this must be the only movie where, like, Bond sleeps with only one girl. Like, one Bond girl. Because it doesn't do with Xena. And I go, he's no, he's so wrong. Because he, he, it's his yep. evaluator. He, yep. he, you know, seduces her. That was really funny. <laughs> And I'm going to argue, and we'll get to it, but he doesn't have sex with Xenia on the top. No. But he gets her off. Yeah, she... Yeah, when we talk about her, there, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's a couple it's... weird things there. Oh, man. Yeah. Like, it's there's some weird stuff. Like, And this, guys, it's a very horny movie. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It is. <laughs> it really is. Like, this is, like, one of the horniest it's James visceral, Bond like movies. Visceral, like, yeah, visceral. No, right. Because like, that's what know. I wrote down. The <laughs> yeah. fighting, some of the combat stuff, and some of, like, the intimacy. I was like, I... I, I just the breathing on each other. Everyone. <laughs> right. Everyone. Sean Bean is, too. Everyone. <laughs> yes. No, yeah, well, there's that scene. Again, we'll get to it, but where Sean Bean kind of... Not kind of. He sexually assaults the time. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, he is awfully rapey. He's very he really, <laughs> yeah, it's super rapey. And I, I forgot I, about that. I just like why, why yeah. do that? But like Sean Bean, because power. Yeah, he knows I, he's gonna. I, do... I, I think it was more revolved around that. I don't think yeah. it had. It's a bond. And, to yeah, because he just bond. it's a way to yeah. dig at Bond again. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I agree because he so says he like I can. It, but... <laughs> I, I we share everything. I have everything yeah, he does. Yeah. I think it's more yeah. of a possessing something Possessing, Bond yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, but it still doesn't make it okay and still makes this movie very horny. <laughs> so very much so. So he passed his movie. test. He passed his test. What was the test? Uh, Driving? I yeah, I I think well, it, I think it was a psych evaluation. Psych? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> which he very clearly should have failed because what he does during the psych evaluation is uh, race Xania on yes. the top. Well, yeah. And like dr every time the psych the psychologist says, "Hey, uh, maybe you shouldn't drive this fast." He goes faster. And then at some point, he pops out champagne from yeah. the car, mm -hmm. and one could only assume they imbibe and then he drinks and drives before they go back to his hotel or wherever they are to get it on. I mean, <laughs> he yeah, he even tells her at one point something like that. Oh, something about this is, and that's the next girl over there. Referring to yeah. Zaniana. Yes, really? right. Yeah. She said, I forgot that. She says, um, I like to go as fast as the next girl, but maybe this is a bit too much. Right, and right. then Zania shows up and she's doing that crazy Zania look. Like she's got crazy <laughs> eyes, you know? Yeah. Uh, I've dated people like that. It's crazy. crazy uh, but, uh, and then she's like, who's that? The, the, oh, well, that's the next the girl. girl. It's like, wow. <laughs> like, is this negging? I've, I've heard that term. Is this what negging is? <laughs> me probably i guess I mean, like you know oh, you're with me now but that's who i'm gonna be with next isn't she hotter you cow like <laughs> i think she wasn't she wasn't putting out all the way and so he was like all right well yeah. what about her and then she's like well, I'm like oh, bond um, oh but yeah but i love can, it can we talk about the music the weird music that plays during yeah. this car chase it's it was very sure. goofy yeah. <laughs> And that way we want to, you know, yeah, it just yeah. came from. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree. And I'll tell you something, and maybe this is because we just finished, um, this is on the heels of the Craig run. There are some things where I'm like, wow, that's weird. Right. Yeah. You know, and so I, I agree with you. The music was strange. But there's yeah, I mean, more I, quirky moments, like like I, comedically, right? And, and his later movies, I feel like, they, you know, 
um, comedic relief, kind of, because it's such a funny scene. This is, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's definitely played for laughs, and like the, the music choice, just I, I don't know, it was just kind of you weren't ready. I didn't remember it. No, I wasn't ready for it at all. Because you're right, <laughs> we just we just came, we just went through the Daniel Craig run, so we're kind of like got that Bond my, mindset, and now we go back to this, and like, oh, that's right. This is yeah. nothing like the Craig run whatsoever. <laughs> and then you got this. Um, I, I like the, the car chase. The where, I guess it's a, I don't know if it's a car chase. Yeah, or, like, chase, race. Like, I don't know. It's, it's car, car. It's fun flirting. car stuff. Yeah, yeah. car flirting, Ooh, I guess. Car Definitely. foreplay. It's car play. Yeah. Oh, well, car <laughs> play. That's the better word to use for this movie. Yes, yeah. this whole movie is car <laughs> this whole, that's, what, that's what the relationship is. <laughs> The whole relationship with Bond and Xenia on its top is car play. I guess we'll call it that. It's on car play, yep. <laughs> so speaking of Xenia on its top, let's get into her. Because she she's in this movie a lot. Yeah. she We get her like in the first 15 minutes of this movie. And I think she dies. Because, of course, hashtag spoilers. She dies. Mm-hmm. Uh, she dies like very close to the end, like in Cuba. Mm-hmm. She's like maybe mm-hmm. the second to last person to die, like Sean Bean being the last. Oh no, yeah. no, you know what? That's not true. Boris. She's Boris the third is the last. Boris. Boris is the last. It's her, Sean Bean, Boris. It's because he's invincible. He is yeah. invincible. <laughs> I love that. Um, so what are? Uh, I love that wanna... she's in so much of this movie. She's great. Oh. A nineties Famke Jensen. Is right up my alley. I love her. House on Haunted Hill. Yep. Faculty. Um, I just watched uh, Rounders the other night, and she's in Rounders, and she's X Men. X Men. Yep. Uh, I miss her. Can I tell you? This is my first introduction to Femke Jensen, the actress, and I loved her in this. I love Xenia on the top. I, I and then, like I just think she's so sexy in this, like in a way that. I don't think Femke Jensen the actress is. I think Femke Jensen's gorgeous. I'm not that's I'm not like, you know, but there's just something about her portrayal of Xenia on a top that it's just like it's just so again horny and sexy and like I'm like Scary. wow, I've never seen that from her again after yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Um but uh, Ed, you wanted to get into a bunch of things with Xenia. So why don't you start us off on our our on a top talk? All right, so let's get uh, on top of this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, Jason, I actually agree with everything you said. This, I remember this is the first time I, I had been introduced to her or whatever, and yeah, I agree. You know, um, she plays the part to that, and there's also the idea that she can kill you. She pretty much uses that whole thing to like lure you in to kill you. And I think the whole thing with her is that she's like getting off on murder. Yes, but I don't remember that. People, I did remember that, and I was just like, was that something? Maybe I was like that. I put in my own head. Like, is that not a thing? Oh man, it's there. every like, time she kills somebody. Yeah, or... I'm like, um, you good? Like, yeah, like when when she kills the the old guy, so they can steal his credentials to yes, steal the helicopter, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like she and and I love the way she kills him. Is she's like got her legs wrapped around her. It's yeah. it's like she's killing him with sex. You know, that's kind of what they're yes. getting at. And she's like, oh, like she's like committed. I'm with you. I'm like, yeah. you, you need a moment? There was like, yeah. there, she's a fight scene with Bond where that happens. But then one line yes. I caught that really like, I was like, this is, it's like something more. It's, she goes like, he's going to derail us when Bond is like going to blow oh, the yes. train off. And everyone's on there. So it's like John yeah. her and uh, uh, Natalia. And, uh, and she's like, aroused slash impressed because mm-hmm. she's like I, I, I and she's such a great actress it's like in the look in her eye and i'm like what is yeah. up like you're yeah. like the death that turns you on it's like uh, you know what is it yeah this i guy's think got... that's what it is yeah yeah so well weird. yeah no she gets off on i think she gets off on inflicting pain g- receiving pain and sp- because there's that moment when she fights with bond in the steam room or in the spa yeah. when he does kind of mess her up and she's mm. kind of bleeding and she goes <laughs> Like she's kind of like light into her own blood. It was, you know, um, but yeah, that scene you're talking about where Bond's like ra- about to ram the train with a truck and everyone's like, it's almost like that, like, oh no, oh no. And she's like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, if I recall though, there's a scene where she's shooting some people and the same thing. It seems like she's getting yeah. off oh, on yeah. it too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, nothing more though when she has that whole thing with Bond and the spa and everything and they're 
going back and forth. And it's funny because, like, she even talks that, like, Bond is, like, flirting with her at the same time and drops the gun, though. And it's kind of like, yeah. it seemed like he's having thoughts of, like, maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. Oh, well. And then she just kind of, like, is getting off that whole thing. He throws her against the wall, and she comes back. And then eventually, he obviously, like, she starts, like, clutching, you know, his, like, rib cage and everything. And that's when he's like, all right, enough of this shit. And throws her onto that, uh, I don't know what the hell that is. It was, like, really odd. Um, what the hell was oh, it? Oh, it's like the, I think that's the Coles, right? The they Coles? Like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And obviously that, like, just burned her to the point where she had to, like, let go and stuff. And even, like, she yells at him in Russian yeah. when he <laughs> has the gun back at her. But I think she would have kept going, for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. No no, no. <laughs> and what's funny about that scene, I realized just last night, she wasn't sent there to kill him. She was sent there to bring him to Janice. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't yep. seen that? She just decided, she saw him in the pool, decided, hey, I want to get off, so I'm going to beat the hell out of him and try to kill him. Why not? That's great. Uh Oh, man. (laughs) And and that's the scene. She definitely gets off in that scene. So I count that as a a sex scene, Mm. even though there was no penetration. (laughs) You might as well count a lot of scenes. Whenever she kills somebody, you might as well count that scene. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, for Bond, I'm counting it. Like okay. that's, oh, that's okay, okay. yeah, yeah. That's right. him getting it on with a, like another person in this and, movie. Okay. Um, but I, what I love better, she's next Soviet fighter pilot. You find out. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that she smokes cigars. I thought that yeah, was awesome. Yeah. Um, I think because this movie ha- definitely has the undertones of we want to give you guys the, the audience a classic Bond feel with kind of a more. Um, you know, more modern sensibility in the 90s. So we're going to give you the, a Bond girl who's like very attractive and feminine, but does quote unquote masculine things and enjoys killing. And, and actually, I think she's this is maybe the only bad guy Bond girl we've had, except for maybe Grace Jones. So far, probably. So far, yeah. right? Like, like a big, like a real good villain hench. Like, yeah. Like an action sort of henchwoman, yeah. Right, yeah. and I think even Grace Jones at the end of uh, that movie, um, the, the, the View to a Kill, exactly. I think she helps Bond. Like, I think yeah, this, this might be the only Bond girl that never has the redemption moment, and she just dies a villain. Yeah, no, she was trying to kill him at the last time we see her, too, so. Yeah. So and I'm, I think this is like the 90s going, all right, so we're going to give you that, but we're also going to call Bond a misogynist dinosaur yeah. and give you a super strong female villain who is very sexual in a weird way. But hey, mm-hmm. you know, 90s. it's the 90s, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, and I, I think it works. I was watching it last night thinking this is one of possibly one. I mean, I'll, I'll weigh in later on, but it's possibly one of my favorite Bond uh, girls in the series like of yeah, all of the too. whole series yeah, yeah. Mine too. um and then she gets we'll talk about her death since we're doing character by character uh, um what'd you guys think about her death i had like what happened she got like, what she pulled only pulled the helicopter down but what happened she got smushed yeah or, so like she yeah. she comes down and she's on this hook from a helicopter and she's like beating the hell out of Bond, and Bond's like he just shoots the helicopter and it makes it go out of control, and it pulls her, and she gets stuck in this like Y shaped tree, yeah. and it kind of I guess it crushes her. Yeah, I think it may have like snapped her neck or something like that, maybe the force yeah. or something like I don't know. It, it was I sometimes like I can't I can't look at a tree that's like built like that with the two branch sort of a space for like a person to go through without thinking about Xenia or death because that death stuck with me as a kid. It's so yeah. like it's grand, it's very grand and big, and like yeah, she. Oh man. Do you, Do you stop and you go? You know, let's say a little prayer for Xenia. You know, like rest uh, in peace, Xenia. Yeah. <laughs> rest, rest, rest in peace was on the top. <laughs> you served your country. <laughs> you were an enemy to our country. <laughs> to to our country. <laughs> um, all right. So, anything else uh, b- about Zany on the top before we move on? Uh, I mean, she's one of two big X Men connections we get in this oh. movie. The other one? Oh, oh my gosh, gosh, you're so right. Yes, Boris. I, like, oh my God. I always forget that 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 uh, Boris is uh, Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. Yeah, but he's like, oh, oh. Jean Grey oh. and Nightcrawler. Yes, that's so funny. All right, so let's talk about let's talk about Boris, uh, played by Alan Cumming, who is like, I think the major henchman, right? This is the specialty henchman. 
Yeah, this is the odd job of deal. the movie, right? Um, and of course, I said it's very 90s, so his thing is a hacker. Uh, but he's also, he's like a sexually frustrated, rapey, creepy hacker, which was like a big thing, like a trope in the 90s. But he's like, a, well, it's well, is in, is it has it gone away? I, I will all say. <laughs> <laughs> he's like a bit of a, um, oh my gosh, what do you call them? Like, uh, uh, not you guys. No, you're not, not but like, um, um, Lordy, what do you call them? You know, like a uh, right winger, you know, like not crazy, like red pillars person. Yeah, you know? oh, yeah, yeah, like a QAnon person. QAnon, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. but they're, or they're yeah. like super uh, misogynistic, like sleaze bags, and they're like, you know, super nerdies. Um, but yeah, it was really, like, I forgot about he was like kind of like a, a little pervy. Yeah. So, yeah, incel, like incel, a, an incel. Incel, that's, that's it. Yeah, he's an oh. incel. Like, yeah, with his codes and his whole thing that he does, like putting the whole, uh, um, what the hell is it? it was like a character on his screen yeah yeah yes. and then like the um I think the Nat- real of Natalia yeah N- yeah, Natalia, Natalia. yeah who's, who's our second Bond girl we'll get to her in yeah. a minute but yeah they work together and he's putting those like he he's a dick because he's like a computer genius hacker and he like locks her out and he puts these stupid sexual like riddles you know and like what was I the only one I remember it's not this one I forget the one he, oh no yeah what he what's in front of you and can open doors I, I... knockers <laughs> knockers oh. <laughs> ah! his, <laughs> his henchman thing is riddles kind of like you know That's what I mean it. That's his little like gimmick he's like a That's shitty. Is... Z-list Riddler. <laughs> he is like you know. It's again, Jenny. You said that you saw like connections to this in Batman. Forever. Shut up. <laughs> there we go. Shitty Z-list Riddler. I mean, wow. <laughs> He's an A-list Riddler in Batman. Oh forever. my god, he just Shot. went there. Shots fired. No, I'm just. <laughs> I'm kidding. It was the, the joke was there. <clears throat> oh, or am I? I don't know. You got to grant his PT to sparring. find out. Hey, sparring only until Saturday. Then the gloves come off. Sparring. That's right. <laughs> Love taps. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, I and then uh, we also get. Let's see. So yeah, so uh, Boris, like, who wants who wants to take us through Boris's journey? I, I'm talking a lot, but uh, which one of you guys want to take us through Boris's journey? Anything interesting you want to talk about? Um, you want this one? No, I just like his death. I was just thinking about because yeah, I know. Like, I mean, yeah, I remember yeah. that that's how he goes because he says that's just like his catchphrase. Yeah, I remember his catchphrase and stuff. And uh, I'm gonna be honest, that's all that I re- re- recalled like going into this that I remember about him the whole stupid invincible thing. Um, but I don't know, he's, he's just a hacker he's talking about all those codes and things like that. No one can break my code or whatever. And I just feel like a lot of the computer talk when you look back on it now just seems very vague. Yeah, yeah. we're like yeah. oh what are you talking about you're Isn't just making up passwords yeah. that no one can figure out <laughs> you you're know? really good at making up passwords <laughs> I mean, what the fuck are we talking about right now I mean, what a time the 90s the mid 90s were when people really didn't understand what hacking or computering was yeah. like because <laughs> in a lot of movies it's like yeah i'm a hacker it's like well, what does that mean exactly yeah yeah right. I'm, I'm in the computer. In. Got into okay, yeah. Well, so I tap the computer keys really heavily and dramatically, yes. and then I'm on the internet. Oh. I mean, yeah. And they mentioned the internet at one point in this movie, and I'm like, oh, wait a second. Is that a thing yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a thing back to like, right, 1995. I'm not yeah, sure. It, it was, that was just around the time when it was like becoming mainstream. When I remember, like, when, when we were in high school, I got AOL. Yeah. You know, and like that's when you had to pay to talk to people, and now I would actually pay not to talk to people online. <laughs> yeah. So we look true. where we've come, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think again, this reflects it. This is the '90s hacking, is computers forever. The internet's taking over. Um, yeah, and then then he pretty. My, I think my Boris scene, which I find so inexplicably weird, is he. We so we see him like lure Natalia in after she escapes the whole destruction of the base, which we'll get to when we get to sort of the plot. And uh, he lures her to the church, she gets taken. He must know they're gonna kill her. And then at the end of the movie, when she shows up, he very genuinely with glee goes, Natalia, you're here, and he goes to <laughs> hug her. It's like, and it's very surprised that she strikes him. It's like, dude, you. You set her up to be killed. You don't know that. 
Yeah, that's true. That is that is a pretty weird thing because yeah, does that <laughs> thing at the church? She, where, she was yeah. angry at him, right? Wasn't yeah, she like, pissed? So course. maybe he was mad at a mess and we're being like, oh, maybe she won't know it was me. I mean, yeah. but like he was there when Zanianatop showed up to abduct her. Like, I just find it to be a weird moment. <laughs> it is a weird moment. <laughs> or was he trying to shoot his shot again? Like, was he right, 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 right. Because they almost they had like a weird banter. Like, she seemed to be like the only friend at work that you, that is your yeah. age. <laughs> Let's be friends. Right. Well, here's the thing. She she was very polite to him at work. Polite, yeah. And he and his incel mind thought that they were going to get married because he's such a nice guy. Sure, 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 mm-hmm. sure, sure. Why not? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, and then, then his hacking comes to an end. He's the last to die. And he and Ed, what is his last line? I'm invincible! <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, the, the, the cold liquid nitrogen, which I love, that death... Pours all over him. I don't even know why this cold liquid nitrogen. I, there. I don't care. Wow. I was like, "What is that?" I was like, "Oh, uh, right. that was acid at first. <laughs> it's like it's, it's it's like when we're in the the base at the beginning. Like, why are there just tanks of freaking explosives? I don't know, but let's go with it. Got to be careful, um, guys. It's the be same careful. reason. Yeah, it's there because of Terminator Two. That's why it's there. That's it. That's a Terminator Two principle. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> and then you know he actually uh, he becomes a, the greatest uh, ice statue ever, um, tying in, of course, to Batman and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are evil. Why would you do this? Like we're trying to avoid them the most we can. <laughs> oh, sorry, I couldn't help myself. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, I actually, this is my first time I saw Alan Cumming. I actually have been a big fan of his ever since. And I'd probably look back on this character more fondly just because I like the actor so much now. Yeah, same. Um, you know, but that's, I don't really have many more thoughts about him. Any Anything else before we knock him off our uh, our list? No, I, I mean, I think you kind of covered it. I mean, yeah, yeah that's it. Give him more than he probably would imagine you would give him. <clears throat> yeah, it's true. That's true. Um, and then before we get into like uh, the next Bond girl, which I think we'll go there next, we'll save Orma for after her, and then we'll do Trevelyan later. But uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the scene where um, we actually meet M for the first time, Judy yeah. Dench's M, right? And this is uh, we talked about like how weird it was getting her again in the Craig series. So, um, like, so Ed, you're the one I know you had the the biggest kind of misgivings about her remaining. Yeah. So how was it seeing her now in her first uh, outing as opposed to like literally just watching her Craig run not too long ago? Like, do you see it more fitting or do you, is it, like, what's your feelings about it? Um, I think it was a little weird at first. When I was just like, Oh shit, that's right. This is when Judy Jen, Jen started as M. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It, it was almost just like, she was still kind of like green at the role. Mm-hmm. And like we see her, like how much shit she's been through by the time we see her like in Skyfall, even though I know this isn't technically continuity with Skyfall whatsoever. But yeah, she's more of a seasoned M at, at that point in, in the Daniel Craig run. Uh, but it was really cool to see her and her whole thing. Like she doesn't fuck around. She sets the tone pretty quickly yeah. with Bond when they have that meeting in her office. And just like, listen, you know, uh, something like you're a misogynistic, like dinosaur from the Cold War or whatever. Yeah, a relic Ever. from the Cold War. Yeah, she shuts oh, him the fuck down immediately. Yep, I'm like, man. look at him, like setting the fucking boundaries right here. <laughs> like, here you go. <laughs> like, don't. And she's like, and she also tells him, like, I'm not scared to go send you off to your death. Yeah, you know, you yeah. think I'm like, you know, a bean counter and stuff like yeah. that. Like, not nah, like you can, but obviously, as the way out, just like, listen, by the way, just don't die. Right. Yeah. You know. I'm not saying I want you to die, but if you happen to die, <laughs> yeah. then oh shit, oh well. Right. Like, I, I'd like you, if I had my choice, you'll come back, but if it's you die or I don't send you on this mission, you're dead. <laughs> exactly. And she yeah. keeps that, though, throughout her, her run. Yeah, you that's know, true. Whether it's continuity or not. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ginny, uh, thoughts? I disagree with what he said because I, I like had flashbacks to watching post uh, Skyfall and just hearing about like sending someone to your death or like I have no qualms about doing that. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so great hearing kind of like just that a little. It, again, it's not totally you know continuity, but um, and also the idea that you also made a good point that she's not seasoned and she's not because she's almost 
like I don't like you because I know wh who you are and I know what your past is and that she's also still like him and the other agent they're talking to her and she's getting like confirmation about something from the two of them like almost like an approval like or like mm -hmm. and wh what was that again okay uh, like yeah. it, it's sort of like she wasn't totally um uh, I don't know, like uh, educated in what was going on, what the previous situation was. And she was kind of getting like some feedback because so that was kind of interesting too. When you realize, oh, she probably got promoted or, you know, stepped into this role while he was still active. Yeah, there's yeah, two no. lines though where they confirm that too. Because even yeah. Bond says something to her in that conversation, like, oh, you know, your predecessor kept XYZ, right. oh, yeah. and, like, the cognac right there. Yeah, and then um, the other I, mean, I can't remember the other uh, character's name that he runs into otherwise, and he says something like, "Yeah, here the new M is a woman now." Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So they confirm like this is she's just new to the job. So yeah, it's kind of cool to see that. And I, I do love that line where he's like, "Your predecessor kept the cognac in the shelf," and she goes, "I prefer bourbon." Like yeah. she shuts him down at every. Mm. He's like, "I'd like some cognac. You'll drink bourbon, Bob. <laughs> You'll like it." <laughs> <laughs> um, I also love this line. I, I I I clocked this line actually only because we just got done with the Craig run, and I wanted to get your thoughts on it. With uh, the other guy that she's talking with, Jenny, that you were talking about, like it was Bond, the other guy. I don't remember his name either. Um, but he's saying like he's being real sarcastic about what she's doing and her choices, and it's one of those like she's she hears him and she says. If I want sarcasm, I'll talk to my children. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that line too, now, which is. Yeah, like, does she have? Did, they're never mentioned in the the Craig movies, right? No, I don't think so. I I, I feel I like there so. th there's something there. Or I assumed. I mean, I just assumed. Like, because she did she say she was married? I think so. her husband. I don't like, that's the thing is, I don't remember anything about. And we just watched his movies. I don't remember anything no. about her personal life except for when Bond, like Bond, keeps breaking the freaking apartments in the series. Yeah, she wedding ring. Does she have a wedding? I, I was like, I think she had a husband. Something like small. Yeah. Something gave me like a husband, like a Mister M line. And then, and then I was like, does she have kids? Or like, where are the children? We had a, <laughs> or, I don't know. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so I, I thought it was just interesting. The like I, again, it's not continuity, so it doesn't matter. But I, it just struck me because I, I heard it and I was like, I never actually pictured yeah. the Craig M as a mother. No, me neither. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Well, Jason, we've always talked about though is that I've said that yeah, this having Judy Dench come back in a rebooted Bond for me, it's just like when you reboot, usually you just clean the slate and that's it. Like everyone's mm. gone, whether you like them or not. And it was an interesting choice that they, they kept her, mm -hmm. you know, going in it. So. Yeah. And again, I, it's a choice that I think ultimately worked, but mm -hmm. it's, you know, you'll see these disconnects. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting. Um, while, we're, while we're here, while we're still at MI6, uh, what do you guys think of Money Penny? I love her. I love this yeah. Money Penny. I, I, I mean, I don't know why. I just like the actress and... Um, but I love that banter and it's that thing of like, I had a date, you had a date. And she's like, and she's also super ready for him to like make the move. And she's like, I'm ready when you are. Like if you're going to yeah. make innuendos at me, like, let's go, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's make good, which I love. And I think they have nice chemistry. Um, uh, and yeah, she's great. What is, what was the other line where I just love it? It's like, again, some of the ladies got some great lines here where she says, um, uh, he says uh, something like, uh, what does it take to get you? And she's like, you've never had me. And it's like, yes, burn. Yeah. And she just walked off. Love her. And then, uh, then, yeah, and then the line when he says something and she's like, you know, uh, that's really close to sexual harassment. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, uh, well, wh what happens then? She's like, well, you'll have to make good in your innuendo. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually really love that back and forth. Yeah, between yeah. Them. It's very. It's all very '90s. It's all very of its you know modern of its time. A little co our commentary on a '90s commentary on Bond. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ed, money, penny thoughts. I mean, you guys just covered it. That's literally what I was about to say. Yeah. Like that. That's her. I mean, that's her big moment, right? The, in sure. the elevator when they're talking and stuff. Because we don't see her again. Mm -mm. No, I don't think so. Not, Not before the next movie. So. Yeah. So no, she, she's cool in this, and I'm glad you know she puts kind of calls Bond out and. He just doesn't say anything. He just is like he's tongue tied and just goes on to, to go yeah. see Cuban. <laughs> I think this bond is very much like I would say someone who's realizing that the tides are turning and can <laughs> like cancel culture is about to happen. Oh my god! Like people give him such shit, and he is the character up until this point 
is a misogynist, For is sure. kind of an asshole. You know, like we'll see it when we get to to the the, the the older stuff. And like women are just mouthing off to him, and you know Connery's Bond would be like, I know. "All right, to smack a woman," <laughs> and he's just like, "Okay, all right yeah. then." Yep, he's like, you know. Well. <laughs> I'm still charming, right? right. <laughs> Not a total creep, right? I feel like he Actually, had the bartender, like he had Danny Trejo in Anchorman. I was like, yeah. the ladies can do stuff now. You know, you gotta like get with the times, man. <laughs> oh, that's it exactly. <laughs> He's like, well, I guess so. All right, I can be Bond, James Bond, feminist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. All right, so then let's talk about let's see uh, let's talk about let's talk about Natalia because I think that's the next place to go, and then we'll go Trevelyan. I don't think like I don't think we need to talk about Oromov a lot. We'll talk about him with Trevelyan because they're all yeah. together. Um, but uh, all right, so Bond girl number two is Natalia, who was as we said Boris's like counterpart. She's a hacker. She works at the the golden eye sort of research station with Boris which it which you see later Ormov uh busts in kills everyone but her and Boris use the golden eye to destroy it she has this kind of badass moment of climbing a freaking satellite to get out of there mm-hmm. um and she kind of gets swept up into things but uh so Ed where would you put her like what what are your thoughts about her as a Bond girl like did you and especially in comparison to Zania who is the other Bond girl in this film? Like, so what? What, what do you think? Both really, really strong Bond girls. Uh, I actually didn't recall her having this much of an impact on the on the film and in the, in the plot and everything. So, um, yeah, no, she she has a lot to do. She's not kind of just pretty face to be there and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I mean, her and Bond, they. Do something, Jason. Get it all. <laughs> Which like happens twice in like five to ten minutes of the film, and I'm like, oh wait, what? Yeah. And it actually brings up a question I want to ask you guys. Um, do you guys wear a watch at all? Uh no. Sometimes. You, okay. Do your significant others wear watches at all? Maybe. Yes. Okay. Maybe. Uh, when you guys have sex, do you take the watch off or do you keep it on? Because Bond keeps it on. I was oh, watching it. This. Wow. I did because I remember. You don't have to answer that. Actually, that was my setup for this thing. <laughs> you don't have to tell me if Tom takes his watch off. <laughs> you leave your hat on. But, yeah, hey, um, but I I, re- I noticed it because I remembered uh, in the late '90s, early 2000s. Not this movie, but when we get to die another day. Like he was really hardcore pushing the watch. Right, like he was in commercials, oh, and not in the movies so much. They were in the movies; it was product placement. But for the longest time in Jackson Heights in Queens, there was a huge—I don't even know it's still there because I haven't been there since before the pandemic. But there was a huge sort of uh, poster with Pierce Brosnan's Bond, even after Craig took over, still hawking these watches. Really, that's funny, and that's why I clocked it. So he had sex with Natalia when they get to Cuba. And he's still like he's naked in bed, and he's still got the watch on. I'm thinking, did he keep that on the whole time? It's very Pat Bateman of him. What is it? Right? <laughs> don't, don't, don't touch the watch. <laughs> Making this watch like looking at the watch while yeah. he goes arm around her so he can right. look at it. <laughs> He holds the watch up and maybe gets a gl- glimmer of himself. <laughs> what is it, a Rolex? What kind of watch is it? Do we it's, know? I think it's a... Uh, is it Omega? Because I thought... No, Omega. I think it's Omega. Yeah, yeah right? I think it's Omega. Is that good? I'm not a watch guy. Like, oh, I stopped wearing a watch when I got a cell phone. Yeah, Jerry's a watch dude. I'll have to ask him. Oh, ask Jerry if, <laughs> if he keeps the watch on when he... If it is... Uh... Yeah, I'll, I'll ask him is the watch good, and then I'll, I won't let him answer the question. I'll ask it, and then I'll just not let him answer it. I'll just walk look, away. If anyone is going to answer that question, it's Jerry. Oh, he'll That's answer in two seconds. I don't it's like, hey, look, we can actually call Jerry now and come on the show just to do that, the, the watch sex talk, and he'll come on and give us a 20-minute lecture on it. Oh, yeah, he'll tell you the answer whether you want to hear it or not. That's right. So I like Jerry. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so they yeah they do have sex twice. Ginny, what was your thoughts uh, overall on Natalia? Like, did you like her as much as Zania? Do you? Ha- what do you? What are your thoughts? I, she's so like, and I um, I think she's gorgeous. I think she's very beautiful, and I think I agree with you. I think now I'm looking at it. I was like, she has more to do than I remember. 
Um, she's a bit sass. She's spunkier um, than I kind of remembered. I thought she was very like bland, basic. Uh, um, yeah, they, she, they gave her like the um, uh, honey rider bathing suit, which I was like, mm. we don't need to do that. That's that's a honey <laughs> rider bathing. We don't we don't need to try to you know emulate that again. Um, but uh, I, I like I think Xenia stands out to me more. Um, there's another great line, but I do love when there's a moment when James Bond, when Sean Bean's got the gun to her and he's like, yeah. you know, kill her. She means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the, the big fight, they get away. But at the end, they, Bond's got a gun on him and she's like, kill him. He means nothing to me because she's like, did you really mean that? And he's like, I was just calling their bluff. And she's like, oh, laugh, laugh, laugh. But I like that she did a call back to it. It yeah. was super cute. So, um yeah, I, I was like, yeah. but she's fine. She's not going to rank in my worst, and she's not going to rank in any of my bests. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. She's she's very middle for me. Uh, I, I think she has some really good lines, but I think she also has some really bad lines. So, like, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll get to the line in a second. Let me catch us up to the plot. So, uh, when last we left our heroes, um, Zania on the top brings uh. Bond to Alec Trevelyan, which we find is still alive. He's Janice. He's 006. He's a Cossack. He's evil. Um, <laughs> he knocks him out. And inexplicably, like, if I was... If I were really 006, I would have knocked James Bond out and then put a bullet in his head. Like, I wouldn't have done this elaborate... I'm going to tie him and this woman hostage up in the plane that Oromov stole. Thank God. Uh, to sort of like blow them up, like and set it so they have about fifteen minutes to escape while the missiles go out and come back and like, I mean, it, look, it's a hand wave, cool James Bond action scene, but I don't I, put look, bang, bang, you're you're done. <laughs> Why not disable the parachutes and the ejector seat? You guys are really thinking about this. I mean, I'm no. able to parachute. Jenny, that smacked me in the face. Well, I just watched yeah. this movie before we went on. Okay? I, I've been trying to do that so it's fresh in the right, mind. Right, 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 right. And I don't know. This is the first time I've, then, I've seen this movie a bunch of times, but this is the first time it stood out to me, and I don't know why. <laughs> I guess because we're, like, breaking it down so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck? There's parachutes? And oh, my God. Did he want to make sure they were safe when they escaped? Yeah. I mean, what the hell, man? <laughs> Well, I, I get my thing is just like, all right, so I, here's the plan. We're going to knock them out. We're going to tie them up in this thing, and we're going to let nature take its course. Like, <laughs> what? Like, for, forget even about, like, I'll even say, like, okay, maybe they forgot that there was an ejector button with parachutes in this. Thing. All right, now, now you're making it more ridiculous by saying that part. Someone told him, <laughs> like, it's an old, it's an old, it's an old crappy um, plane. There's nothing in there anymore. Nothing's up to code. Trust me. And then everything's right. like, fine. You know what? You're right, Ed, because you're, you're both you're right. Kill, you're making it worse now. Because in that scene, the way James, like the ejector seat button is literally by Bond's head. Yes. Because <laughs> he just goes, bang. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted them to get out. I sort of think. It, I think he was playing with them, like a like a like a mouse and stuff, yes. like a cat with a mouse and stuff. <laughs> it's the only but, excuse I can I can come up with for that. It's uh, yeah. It's the only thing you could do. Uh, um, but then, so him and Natalia get arrested, and this uh, leads to one of my favorite scenes and stage five in the game, uh, <laughs> where you have to escape from this interrogation, uh, which, by the way one of maybe three levels because I got crazy into that game where I was trying to speed run levels to open up um, different, like ch different, like cheats or whatever. Yeah. And I opened up the invisibility cheat by speed running this level. You had to do it in like a minute. It was oh, insane. Really? Oh, really? Again, I told you, I said, I've played this game more times than I've seen all 26 James Bonds cumulatively, oh, wow. <laughs> but so they bring them there, and it's actually a really cool scene where they bring the minister, one of the ministers of defense from Russia, and Bond is like they've got Bond and her because it's a spy and a collaborator is what they you know fairly think, and the two start the Bond and the the defense minister start arguing, and the worst line that she has is "You boys act, you're acting like boys with toys," and it's like. What? Yeah, it's like I cringe when you say I cringed when I was like six years old when I watched yeah. the movie for the first time, and I'm cringing. I cringe now. I cringe, and I hope. She, and I think they almost say it again. They say it like twice, and I'm like, don't say it again. 
It's yeah, like, Bond calls back to it later. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm like, don't don't do that. Yeah. It's like this is not a poorly written movie, but that's the worst line of the movie, mm. hands down. It's not good. No. Um, but then that scene I think is super cool where like you think the, the Russian government's right. gonna try to put the, the screws to Bond, and he's like, All right, no, we're gonna investigate this fairly because that sounds plausible, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, and then Ormov comes in and like executes him. <laughs> So that brings us to Ormov, which we'll talk to a bit about just very briefly, and then we'll jump to Trevelyan and the plan. Uh, Ed, any any thoughts on Ormov? Um, besides the fact that he completely boozes it up on this whole scene where Bond is yeah. like trying to catch him in the tank. Uh, and I'm sorry if you were going to say that, but I, I'll leave it to you. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's literally all I have to say about the guy, honestly. Like, and I, by the way, I want to say I love. That whole tank, it's not a car chase, oh, it's a tank chase. A tank chase. Right, yes, my favorite. Yeah. Really, like really. Five or six in the game. And remember, <laughs> from, from the from the moron who didn't get to, didn't get to play the game, I assumed, I, when I was watching the movie, I'm like, they probably had so much fun playing this in the game. I'm not even kidding, it just crossed my mind. It just crossed my mind. <laughs> um, you know, they had a blast. I, I gotta go find the N64 and buy the damn cartridge for like... <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like way too much money now. And now oh, it's like a hundred bucks now, which kind of annoys me because I used to own it like a couple of years ago, and I sold it on eBay for fifty. And man, I should have just held on to it. I could have gotten a hundred for inflation. It yeah. yeah, hold out, man. Um, yeah, that was my standout moment for the guy. How drunk was this guy during that? <laughs> he just keeps sneaking the men and sneaking the men, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm like. Well, I guess if I'm getting chased by a dude in a tank, I'm probably going to be fucking paranoid as shit. Right? I don't want to get wasted in the back seat. <laughs> yeah, he's got a he, dude. He's got a, he, I think he, he out drinks Bond in this movie. Oh I my think gosh, he does. Definitely. Yeah. Every he time does. you see him in that chase, it's flash, flash, flash. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's just, yeah, because I don't even say how much drinking does Bond really do in this room? One martini. Yeah, right? No. Pretty light. Let's yeah, I think. Has one bourbon, more, a little bourbon, and the yeah, one martini and the bourbon with M, right? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and the champagne in the beginning, and champagne. Oh my gosh, okay, forget. all right. Actually, okay. he does, he does, all right. That's kind of what <laughs> drinking. <laughs> that's that's it. It. <laughs> no, this, he still out drinks him during that whole car chase. I agree, the, I agree, the, the tank chase because yeah, he, like, I mean, listen, he, he plays the role of like this slimy villain that's there and he does it well, and he's a damn drunk, so <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's all I got on him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ginny, any Otomov thoughts? No, again, I just look, every time I look at that man, I just think, and if I ever saw him in anything else, I would think the video game, because that is yeah. the, like, they have the actor faces, and the likeness yes. is really good, and that's just... just... Yeah, I definitely, I, I'm there with you. So many and Russians. Oh. Speaking of the video game, so that leads us to the train sequence, right? Which the next level in this is <laughs> escaping the train. But I think that this, so this brings us to where we're talking about um, Zania being really turned on about the train. Uh, Bond crashes the, the tank into the train, gets in, and has this whole standoff with the villain, who is Alec Trevelyan, 006, we said, whose plan is to... It, this is like, I'm going to say this is a fight club plan because his plan is to use the golden eye to destroy all of England's records and send it back to the stone age while mm. also robbing banks. So it's mm. like fight club plus yeah. the heist. Um, <laughs> but that's like, that's the fight club. And it's funny, Ed, because you didn't know I was going to say that, but you sent me this thing. Uh, he Ed texted me about like trying to change the ending of fight club uh to show yeah. that like the government wins oh no way yeah yeah like yeah like they arrest them and stuff and like oh, they they win in the end and i just saw uh, it's funny because a friend of mine sent me that article and i know jason you, you know you i love fight club and i know you yeah do too. i love it um and i had to send it right away i wanted to ask you right now were you thinking the fight club plan before you read the article a couple no a hundred percent like it's in my notes like Last night as I was watching it, because I didn't remember. I remember yeah. the Golden Eye. I remembered like the Golden Eye. I, I actually thought it was a big laser, which I guess it is, but it's like an EMP. That's really mm -hmm. what they're yeah. using it as. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't remember what the plan was. 
And I was like, oh, okay, they're going to rob a bank. All right. So I was like, all right, so this is like Die Hard 3. You you (laughs) glimmer over here and rob the bank there, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, But then when he goes on this whole thing about, like, how he's the Cossack and – and there was this whole thing in the 1940s where they helped the, his people were Russians who helped um, the Nazis. And so right. the the right. Russians and the English executed them. And so like he the, his family was from there and he uh, emigrates to England and somehow becomes uh, trusted in the MI6 and, you know, all that. But um, I forgot that his whole thing was that he really just wants to punish England. And yeah, it's and so I was thinking this is Fight Club, man. He wants to do, he's setting everyone back to zero. He's got Tyler Durden, uh-huh. Durden on his back, you know. <laughs> oh, I can totally picture this guy having a Tyler Durden situation going on oh, man. and everything. And like I yeah, he would start a fight club. <laughs> yeah. With, with Boris and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I can see Boris fight clubbing it out. I just yeah. had a whole nother side movie in my head. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I am invincible. Bang. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I mean it's and and, and it makes sense too because he's Janice, right? He's the the, the two faced uh, true, god, true. I think, yeah. god, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he does have sort of the two faced thing going on because he's got the scars because James like uh, messed with the explosives and the opening credits, so the the cold open. When he was faking his death, he thought he had five minutes. He had three. It scarred mm. him up. So, okay. um, but yes, yeah, so that that's kind of the plan. I before I give it over to you guys because this is the one thing I kind of really want to touch on in this was I really feel that this movie influenced Skyfall in a bunch of ways. I and so. yeah, yeah, like because we get the evil James Bond, yeah. right? We we get the shadow. And this movie is also a movie like Skyfall about the old ways versus the new ways, the young versus the old, right? The new guard versus the old guard. Um, and so I, I really kind of was impressed with that. Like, not not it, like it's not not impressed that this movie, you know, uh, did this, <laughs> but the, the fact that like Skyfall was able to sort of take this and kind of build on it, and 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 yeah, and I guess I was impressed the movie did that. So that was my big thing with bringing up Trevelyan was that whole parallel. Um, what do you guys think about like Alec Trevelyan 006 the villain? I had the same thought about the, oh, so he's also an, an evil version of Bond, but he's blonde. So that indicate indicator number one. Um, but I just, I had that fleeting thought that just, just, I, I remember that the sort of the evil double O agent. Um and I guess I got a, I got a better idea about his backstory this time around, as opposed to, and I always knew why he, you know, why he did what he did. I just think the realization of his parents were kind of like, I don't know, we're, it's dark. And then, and then the, they're like, we'll take him in. He won't remember what we did. It was yeah. kind of like, you know, yeah. I, I was like, that's, um, yeah, that's pretty dark. But um, yeah, uh, I, yeah, definitely. I, I, I love Sean Bean too. Yeah. Man, he's great. He's very um you go ahead ed Lo- love ned stark love and, ned. And, and, and <laughs> you get. i mean plus you know when sean bean shows up he's gonna die yeah. he's gonna At die and i mean he has to die this was actually my first sean bean movie this again how i know him is from this movie and so like i didn't know that of course i knew he was gonna die but like you know in the beginning i didn't realize that he was really a double agent but i guess if i saw it now i'd be like oh yeah villain because he's gonna die <laughs> Oh, and I saw and I saw this when I, I had to be what like 15, 16 years old or something like that. No, of course I I probably missed that part in it and only caught it later on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it's it's pretty cool. And I, I the yeah, the connection or the parables to Skyfall, I am gonna tell you I I remember there being a evil double O agent in this film. I just didn't see the I didn't make the connections to Skyfall like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, I could see the parallels completely now. Uh, I just think, as much as this movie did it well, Skyfall just did it better. Of course. Yeah, of course. They, they just did it better. Um, and another interesting thing, though, is that Martin Campbell directed this film, who directed Casino Royale. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know he that. He started two eras of, of oh, Bond back-to-back, right, right. back, and I thought that was an interesting choice. And made two very iconic James Bond movies. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, if, we, like... if we ranked the director Bond directors at some point, which I mean, I probably could have named most of them to tell the truth, uh, but he would probably be, I mean, <laughs> arguably one of the best. Yeah. 
just for doing that alone. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, legend you, status. Yeah. For sure. Because again, I mean, I put. I, I actually used to have Goldeneye in my top five, but now I think it's like six. I think it's dropped one because I didn't remember liking Skyfall as much as I, I did on this this watch. Mm. Um, yeah. But like, but I think it's one of the best for sure. And the and Skyfall and Casino Royale is like my second or third, depending on the day you ask me. Um, yeah. You and know, Martin so Campbell does Green Lantern too? <laughs> yeah, does he really? Yeah, no, he directed Green Lantern also. I take everything off. I, I mean, oh, nice say I take it back. Sorry. He did, but he did Mask of Zorro. So upbeat, right? Didn't he do Mask uh, of Zorro with um, Antonio Banderas? Yes, I believe Maybe. so. I, like I in, will, I'm going to find that out while we're still while we're chatting about this because I will uh, just pull up IMDb and look up his. Uh, yeah, he I did. Forgot Mask that he did Goldeneye. Did he do Mask yeah. of Zorro? Yes. It says known for Casino Royale, Vertical Limit. Um, oh, I remember that. Yeah, kinda. Mask of Zorro. And Green Lantern, Golden Eye is not in the top four of us. That's ridiculous. That that's, is ridiculous. Yeah. No, Golden Eye is a better movie than all four of the movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's weird. Uh, I mean, non Bond movies. You know what I meant. Yes. Um, so yeah, so then Double Double O Six uh, meets his death because let's we'll round up with his death where Bond straight up murders him by letting him fall to his death because it is the nineties. And we have, if you're a villain in the 90s, the way you die is you fall to your death. And so they're in Cuba, in the, hanging off this huge, like, uh, dish, like... Yeah, dish. Yeah. yeah like, they, I, they describe it as that, too. It's like a satellite yeah, dish. Right? A satellite dish. I couldn't think of the yeah. name. Thank you. Uh, and then, you know, uh, they hit Trevelyan and, and Bond fought, and Trevelyan looks up, and he goes, for England, James! And no. Jay for me. Yep, and yes. he's just like ah, bang. And I think he actually somehow survives that because yes. he also gets crushed. <laughs> what, which reminded me of how the villain dies in uh in the Naked Gun. <laughs> like yes. he falls and then something else ridiculous has to fall on top That's of him right. to make sure he's dead. And then I waited for I was waiting for like the band to come through to stop on him and the street roll I was I would, uh, dude. If that happened, I would love that. As bad as it, as much as it would have ruined the movie, I would have loved that. <laughs> that may have pushed it to my number one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that leads to we've got one more person to talk about. Then we do Q Branch. Then we're good. So uh, we have no Felix Leiter in this movie because thank God you're bringing him up. Yeah, you yeah. have. Oh, how could we not talk about Wade? Like, uh, what is it, Jack Wade? Jack Wade. Jack Wade. Because uh, because canonically. Uh, Felix Leiter dies. He's murdered very viciously and brutally in um, uh, License to Kill, uh, which Ed saw when he was like ten. <laughs> I saw a lot of I saw a lot of bad things at that age. And prior to that, right? I saw Nightmare on Elm Street before that. Oh, okay. So this was nothing uh -huh. to you. Oh yeah, that was a walk in the park. <laughs> um, and he's replaced by Jack Wade. Who is a great character actor? Damn, I forgot to look his name up because I don't remember his name. Hold on, I'll, I'll get you. Thank you, thank you, E. Brad. Joe Don Baker. Joe Don, Don Baker. Baker. Yes, of course. Joe. How can I forget Joe Don Baker's name? He's a legend of character actors. A legend in B movies as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he is like a very American CIA to the point where like Bond meets him and Bond's like you know. Uh, Sally sells she sells by the seashore, whatever the hell the code word is. And he's like, Ah, you Brits and your code words, get the hell out of here, Jimbo. Let's go. That's how we act. That's how we <laughs> yeah. all act. All of us act. All of us. And he calls him Jimmy. Yeah, repeatedly. Jimmy, yep. That's right. Jimmy, Jimbo. Jimmy. Like, I, 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 he smacked him. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. So, um, how do we feel? And how do you feel about, uh, about Jack Wade and as our our new Felix Leiter because he's in these movies. I believe he's in yeah. all four of these movies, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> pisses me off. <laughs> it, pisses, it pisses me off that he, that it's not fucking Felix Leiter. Like this is what we've got. Are, are do you think it was a choice though, creatively, or do you think it was because they were actually trying to canonize some of this? Uh, is, I think is, they would, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jenny. Is he in the book? Is Jack Wade in the book? At no. any of the books? No, no, no it's well, just Felix. Know. Here's the thing: is the uh, license to kill is not one of the books. Right. So, as far as I've gotten so far, Felix Leiter doesn't die. He gets, he gets, um, he loses an arm from a shark attack. Uh, more from and, a shark attack. <laughs> huh? 
he loses a whole lot more from a shark attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, and like becomes like a Pinkerton instead of CIA. So oh. the character changes, but he doesn't oh. die. So and even if he does die, I don't think it's like I don't think we I don't think we ever get like Jack, Jack Way. Like I I think this is like. Hey, you know it'd be funny if we showed like Americans how Europeans see them in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I got from it. But I don't know. I was just like, this is like I just kept on thinking to him like, this is I'm just gonna call you not Felix Leiter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's who you are. You are not Felix Leiter. And at the end of the movie, when he's like, yeah, I'm gonna go take your car. Which, by the way, the Bond car. As much as Q hypes it up and talks about all these awesome gadgets, not one of them is used throughout oh, the film. Yeah. Like, it's literally yeah. just for that, which annoys me because I'm all about the Bond cars in each of them. Um, that that annoyed me. But yeah, he takes the car, drives off. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get some backup. I'm going to go get the Marines. The Marines show up at the end to block <laughs> yeah. Bond. So you're like, <laughs> what are you? Yes. What were you what guys? Were you? Exactly. Exactly, Jeannie. Like, what were you guys doing? You went to go get backup. You were there, so you went there and like, oh, shit. Jimmy's dealing with some shit over there. Let's go all hype right now Wait, and go yeah. camouflage. And then as soon as he tries to get it on, we're going to jump out then. <laughs> It'll be That's funny. It'll be really funny. Did. Yeah, they're like, it's going to be really funny if you block him because we know this dude can't help himself. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what they don't tell us is that uh, Jimmy Wade, or whatever his name is, is um, James Bond's sponsor for sex addiction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, That's really what he was there. That's why he was like, look, Jimmy, we are Jimbo. We've never been here. You're under the CIA. You don't even know what the alphabet is to say CIA. No one has ever <laughs> been here. This is an unsanctioned mission because I'm here as your sponsor to make sure that you do not have sex again with another Bond girl. You got me, Jimbo? <laughs> Even though you've had sex with this one twice already, but we're gonna <laughs> we stop. That, that's enough. <laughs> yeah, you got away the other times, so but I'm gonna stop you this time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just think he's 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 kind of pointless. He's just there. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so, I like uh, I like that Joe John Baker is here, but yeah, his yeah. character doesn't do much. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Ginny, any, uh, no, that was it. I was like, yeah. you're not Felix. That's right. And I remember he's in the other movies. And he's just like the lead. I think we don't have a Felix ever. We don't get a Felix no, in any of not, the not movies. Not right? We have, we have Joe Don Baker. <laughs> Joe Don Baker. Which, again, like it, the way Bond makes him prove that he's actual CIA is making him show his ass tattoo of a heart, which yep. <laughs> that's so weird. It was a flower. It was a flower that said Oh, Oh, it was a flower. That's it. Yeah. I don't know what. Uh, I don't. Oh, I just because I just wrote ass tattoo. I didn't write what it was. <laughs> I mean, I, that does cover it. That does cover it. <laughs> you don't want to look. No. Um, and I guess so. Let's we'll do uh, we'll do Q branch, and then we'll uh, do whatever finishing thoughts we didn't we didn't hit. So uh, Q branch. This is what I clocked. We had the the grappling gun. Uh, we have a whole scene with with a very very elderly Desmond Llewellyn. Mm. I I believe reading cue cards. <laughs> really? Oh. Maybe. Yeah. I I think I actually did watch a, a behind the scenes thing where it, it kind of showed he was reading cue oh, cards. No. Whatever, whatever. The man's a legend. Man played Q in like every movie until he died, and he was in his eighties. You know he died. He was in his eighties. Do you guys know he died? Car accident. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. <sighs> So it's not even like, oh, he died of old age, peaceful. No, that motherfucker oh. was hanging on to the very yeah. end. Yeah, um, gone for another ten years. Exactly, yeah. playing, playing Q. He would have uh, been in uh, the Craig era. Could, oh, actually, yeah. I'd, I'd have been okay with that actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sorry. yeah, but we get, um, so we get the leather belt with the repellent cord. We get the X-ray document scanner, which I don't think does he use either of those two. I don't know that, no. No. He uses um, the belts, but he doesn't use the. Uh, okay. He uses the belt to swing. That's when, right. oh, that's right. Yeah. He I'm sorry. No, no. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't use the scanner whatsoever, though. That was another, just like the car, apparently. Yeah, right. It's, it's <laughs> cool, but not for you, Bob. Uh, and then he has the pen grenade, which comes in very. It's a huge thing, yeah. like you know, it. it you, right, you click yeah, three yeah, times yeah, yeah. and then it's armed and it and they show that it actually can blow like a whole human torso up and he uses it at the end to like uh, escape the Trevelyan's plan and you know pretty much he's the thing that kills Boris at some point. That was a stressful uh, because, scene. I'm not gonna lie when he's clicking, oh, clicking, yeah, and Bob is staring very. and staring because it goes on for a while. Yeah. Yep. 
And I like that with Boris, I, we forgot to mention it, but they set up his like weird pen thing. Like he mm-hmm. does it a couple times throughout the movie. So when it happens with Bond's pen, it's like, oh, that that works, man. That's pretty freaking smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it does. Um, well, when so he like, shows, what about when Q shows him the pen though, and he blows up half the torso, and he yeah. tells him like, "Don't say it." Don't yeah. say it's like the writing's on the wall. Well, yeah. And maybe you actually think of the song too. And I was like, I was like, ah, oh, no. <laughs> yes. And by the way, one of the quippiest bonds we've ever got. Yeah, so quippy. But I loved all of it. It all worked I, for me. I, I don't know. I kind of, yeah. I dug it. I did too. Because Pierce Brosnan sells it because he's so yes. goddamn charming yeah. and good looking. Um, and then, uh, and then Q's lunch. Yes. I'm yeah, counting that lunch. as a gadget. <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought Bob was going to try to take a bite out of it. He was just staring at it, but I thought he was going to be like, "Ah, uh... I did too." Right? <laughs> him and Q do not like each other. I wouldn't be surprised. Like uh, 007, that's my lunch. Oh. You know, just watching him. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I, I actually think this movie, the. I didn't think the gadgets were egregious. I know they get really crazy. Um, I thought the bomb pen was cool, though I did watch, I remembered this and I looked it up today, Mythbusters busted this, it is impossible to make a grenade with enough power to do what it did to that dummy. It blows oh. a hole in it, but it's not going to completely destroy the to- the upper torso. You can find it on YouTube, actually, the, oh, wow. the clip of that. Um, but I, I actually think th- this was like the perfect amount of Bond gadgets. Like, they weren't too crazy, but they were still Bond, and I had fun with it. Uh, what do you guys think of the gadgets? Uh, Ed, you're Q-Branch, so you, you have to start us off always for the gadgets. Um, I missed them, to tell you the truth. I didn't think I would, right? Because I kind of applauded the Daniel Craig run, and you know, well, like we talked about, for not going there or slowly going there. But they obviously never went to this. I missed them, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. This is nice, actually. But you're right, though. They don't go too, too crazy. Just disappointed by the car, though, because I wanted to see the car yeah. do its thing. So, And unfortunately, in a couple of movies, we really see the car do its thing when it's invisible. And it gets really crazy. Ooh, that's that's Die Another Day, right? Oh, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like any the every negative thing you say, except for the worst ending line of a Bond movie, I can just assume is Die Another Day. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, when, with, with this run, yeah. Yeah, and I'll admit though, when I did see Die Another Day in a the theater, I was like, "Okay, that it's... fucking surfing thing is still weird, and I don't understand it." But the rest of it, I actually think that's the weirdest thing in the movie. And there's some weird yeah. shit in that movie. There's some very yeah. weird, stuff. No, some really weird shit in that movie. I'm not trying to excuse anything, but that <laughs> stupid <laughs> surfing thing is like next. You're level. right. The Hotel of Ice is weird, but it's not <laughs> surfing weird. <laughs> it's not surfing weird. <laughs> well, well, we got it. We got We got like a what, like a month before we get. To yeah, it, so. yeah, yeah. We we, we got some good stuff, and then some not so good yeah. stuff, and then that. Um, but uh, Ginny, any thoughts on the Q branch? I just agree about that. We just got into our Daniel Craig Bond had just gotten some gadgets, and it was like, oh, a taste of what I don't know what the re- his other movies could have been. But mm-hmm. I was like, I do miss gadgets. I and I like this. Is I like my getting into Pierce Brosnan now because he's got some. There's some. I, I, Sometimes I like a bond where we just have some great gadgets out of nowhere, but this is a great, you know, practical. Um, you just kind of catch it and you're like, oh, yeah, cool little gadget. It separates it from being um, just like sort of a, you know, normal spy movie. Um, you know, just get a little, a little, you know, high end gadget. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And again, I, I love, I think the gadgets are just well placed. It's not too much. Yeah. It's not a, not a jetpack, although it, that's, that stuff's cool in the Connery stuff. It just wouldn't have worked here, but you know what I mean. Not too yeah. much. Um, all right, so I figure we'll, we can do some closing thoughts. Uh, so let's do anything that we missed, because I actually do have one or two things I want to talk about that we missed, and I'm the host. So I can only imagine <laughs> that I must have <laughs> missed a couple of things. So, uh, Ginny, did I miss anything that you really want to talk about, any scene that you want to focus on, anything at all? I just uh, I love the banter between um, Sean Bean and Bond. Um, And I just I just think that's kind of a he's I mean, yeah, he's, you know, I think I really do like him as a villain because he's very grounded and he's not um, hyper. And then I also love there's a scene 
with Minnie Driver <laughs> that I always almost forget about. Yes, God, she's that is Minnie Driver. And a bad ru- and a crazy Russian accent to stand, stand by. by your man. <laughs> and he tells her to leave, and she gets angry, <laughs> and she walks off. I love her so much. And um, and there was one thing we talked about is one liners, and the one thing that just made me think of like Austin Powers was when um, I don't know why, but Zinya got gets gets when she dies, and he's like. Um, uh, she always liked a good squeeze. And, yeah. he, like, oh, yeah. it, and he looks to Natalia and is like, well, she always liked a good squeeze. And I, just, I just imagined him keep going. And it was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so the one callback to like, I had a very visceral, like, oh, Austin Powers. Um, <laughs> flashback. But no, this is great. Like, good, good hand to hand combat and the fight scenes. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Or, you know, I'm, I'm going through, but you go ahead. You awesome, uh, Ed. Did, did I miss anything you want to talk about? Any uh, any points? No, we hit everything. But I actually want to echo what Jenny just said. Yeah, I think the fight scenes were. I, I want to give uh, maybe Rosin more credit than I recall because yeah, he's pretty badass and can handle yeah. his own. Because we all gave Daniel Craig like he doesn't go to like Daniel Craig levels of like being rough and like, yeah. brutal, but. He definitely could kick some ass in this movie, so I thought that was that was pretty cool. It was it was more than I recall. Yeah, no, for sure, I, I I agree. Like I always think of him as more of a suaver Bond, but he and he is, but he also like will kick some ass, which I, I appreciate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the 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 things that I wanted to just sort of touch on was Robbie Coltrane. Uh, his yeah. character is the 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 Russian uh, ex KGB guy, Valentin. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I think that gives me my favorite line of the movie when he's taught when Bond is talking to um, whoever it is that sets him up with Valentin. I forget who sets him up. And he's like, yeah, you know, he's ex KGB walks with a limp and he kind of like, oh, Valentin, oh, you know, him? I gave him the limp. I, just, yeah, I love that yeah. line. And I love how he gets Valentin to help him. And I love that. I love Robbie Coltrane. I think he's a cool, cool actor. Mm-hmm. And I love that he comes back in a couple of these movies like mm-hmm. we see him mm-hmm. again mm-hmm. um so i like that and then my my big takeaway for this movie is i really felt that they were really trying to uh bring this movie back to what the franchise was because this was right after um the dalton run which they went super dark and, yeah. and they got, they got yeah. a lot of flack not you know they lost and, and we'll talk about dalton there's upsides there's downsides but i think they're this is them trying to kind of marry like the the spy feel of the Connery movies and sort of the the comedic stuff of the Roger Moore stuff and so my equation is Connery plus Moore equals Brosnan mm. um, and I think it's it's interesting that they this is the first one to bring it back to the Cold War since like uh, oh God since from Russia with Love or thunderball maybe like it, we they leave the cold war stuff behind and this is like okay the, the soviet union's fallen but there's still some cold war stuff which i think is cool but i also think it, it gives me my major problem of the movie is like how old is james bond in this like he was doing yeah. cold war stuff in the 50s and he's <laughs> still active in the 90s and he's fucking hot young pierce brosnan like i don't understand what's going on <laughs> Yeah, I, think, I mean, I don't know. Rick was being Rick was talking today, and he was asking me about Bond and stuff. And I, I don't think he realized that there was technically no continuity mm-hmm. until Daniel Craig era. And I'm but, just like, you kind of just roll with it, no. and, and that's it. I mean, yeah. I mean, but there is and there isn't. Like as we go through it, you'll see. Like in the Lazenby one, he buries someone and she gets killed, and that gets referenced a bunch of times throughout mm-hmm. the Roger Moore. So like. There isn't continuity, but we're supposed to believe it's the same person. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and that's why, like, I, I think, and I, that's why I think ultimately they rebooted it with Craig because it's like, all right, so how the hell are we going to say that Daniel Craig was fighting in the Cold War? There's no way that's going to happen. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and it whatever. It's not a big thing. It was just like I thought of it last night. I'm like, wow, how old is he? Like, I like. Alex Trevelyan's <laughs> parents were killed in the 40s, and this right. is the 90s. And he was six when that happened. There he goes. Yeah, six, so, and they took so him. You, you tell, and him and James are contemporaries. So are they in their 50s or 60s doing this? Uh, 
Uh, is there, right? <laughs> right. All right. Maybe maybe yeah. I, I went I dug too deep. I, I dug too deep in the logic of, of Bond. I'm Dude, gonna, uh, that, that, listen, I, I dug into a parachute and injector seat, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Yours that's is actually point. laid out there perfectly. <laughs> I, I guess all I can say is I am invincible. I'm invincible. <laughs> 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 Um, all right, so overall, where do you guys put this in the the Bond canon? Like, I guess we, we we let's not put them. I figure we won't put them against uh, the Craig ones yet, right? I, maybe we'll wait till we get a couple of Brosnans in. But like, uh, is it has is this mission a success? I guess that's the question I should be asking. Uh, Ginny, was Goldeneye a successful James Bond mission, in your opinion? Yes, totally. All of it. Everything was well placed. Action, Bond girls, our Bond in general is perfect. The song, amazing. Directing, amazing. I think my 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 nitpicks is too much Russian. I don't know. The whole plot is very Russian, but a little too yeah. much Russian. Too many Russians for me. <laughs> You're throwing a different uh, nationality, maybe uh, ethnicity. I wish. I wish that could be like a like a, a quoted review on the box. <laughs> Too many Russians. Ginny Harmon Lawler. But I liked it. Too many Russians, but I liked it. Awesome, awesome. So it's success. Ed was a successful move, a successful outing for Bond for Jimmy Very, Bond for Jimmy Bond. <laughs> Jimmy Bond. Very successful. <laughs> I everything Ginny said I agreed with it. I, I got really no gripes besides obviously little things we were nitpicking here and there, but overall super enjoyable, very rewatchable. Um, if, if we wanted to compare it to other bonds we've reviewed, yeah. I mean, I, look, I can tell I'm looking at Jay right now. I'm like, yeah, she knows I'm going to say, yeah, I liked it more than quantum of solace. That's right. Uh, well. <laughs> uh, no, for sure. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and Spectre. It's better than both of them easily. Oh, uh, wow. Then it gets tricky. Um, I can't say above Skyfall or Casino Royale. Yeah, if that, if you compare the Casino yeah. Royale and Golden yeah. Eye, you'd have to be, but I don't even know where I'd rank them. Yeah, that's where it gets a little tricky. No, well, I think I put those two above, but it gets tricky with this or No Time to Die. Yeah. That's where yeah. I'd have some trouble deciding. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. Um, so, yeah, it, it flirts around there somewhere. Around so I guess slightly ahead of middle of the pack for what we've done so far, but I know it's my favorite of the Marvel run. I'd be shocked if I watched another one of these and said, "Yeah, this is better than Goldeneye." Yeah, same here, same here. I just I love this movie a lot. Uh, Ginny, did you want to rank the? Did you want to rank the Bonds? Because that's or? just kind of it's a weird thing right now. No, but yeah, I, I would say, I'd have to weird. only I'd say just yeah. Casino Royale and uh, Goldeneye are like comparable to me or equals. Cool. Yeah, I, same here. I th I actually think I like this. I think No Time to Die might be a better movie, but I like um, I like Goldeneye more. I like if I, if you were giving me the option of which one I'd rewatch, uh, unless unless I was really in the mood for to watch James Bond die, uh, I would probably go Goldeneye. Yeah. Um, but I yeah, this is a complete success for me. I love this movie. I love this game. I'm surprised we didn't talk more about the game. We talked a lot about it, but I thought <laughs> we'd talk more about it. Um, covered it in. I should have done a playthrough yeah. or something of it, or like watched it on YouTube. I didn't. Well, I didn't brush up. You know what? I my I was going to ask you guys to do that, but then I decided that I uh, I want what I want to do. I don't know how I'm going to do this yet. Maybe I got to explore Twitch. I'm an old man. I got maybe I'll talk, <laughs> I got to talk to Ed. Ed's my cue. Um, but I want to find a way to include uh, a whole everyone in the PCP family who is interested to do it like a live televised like tournament of it. No. I've just got to find fail. a place where we can like, no, I'm going to fail too. I haven't played this game in forever. <laughs> and I will uh, insist stupidly with playing with like an old school Nintendo 64 controller. <laughs> and those things are so needlessly complicated that I don't know yeah. if I remember how to use them. Yeah, they were um, pretty complicated. They were because you had like I have one right here actually I'll show you <laughs> right because this is I, this is for the computer because oh, yeah. I try to you know em do emulators but like you you have this is this moves but this yeah. also moves and then you have the two buttons the with these weird like this is a weird controller yeah Ugh. I'm glad I had a PlayStation <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean damn Zelda but uh because that's why I bought it the uh, the N64. Um, 
but yeah, but I that's what I want. I, I'm thinking if we could figure that out. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do some research we'll and maybe it. we could do like a a special episode where a bunch of us just sort of tournament on Twitch or something. That'd be cool. That'd be, yeah, that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's wraps up Goldeneye. Uh, uh, you could join us next week. We're going to be back on our regular time, hopefully Monday uh, at 830. We're going to be going into the second Pierce Brosnan uh, like foray into the James Bond world, which was uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, uh, which now that I'm thinking about the villain might also be a really 90s, 90s movie. I guess we'll get into it when we get yeah, there. Yeah, it is. You know, now that I'm thinking about it. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, so that'll be next week. So if you enjoyed this show, uh, but you have other interests that are pop culture related, uh, in particular, if you like comic books, you can join Ed and I on Granny's Peach Tea, where we uh, talk about uh, all sorts of comic book related stuff. We cover the CW verse. Uh, Ed, I know we've we've already like we've already talked about it, but what do we got coming up this Saturday uh, on Granny's? So this Saturday at 3 o'clock, we have a landmark episode. We have our 50th episode. So this is going to be a pretty pretty cool one. Uh, our movie of the week is going to be uh, Batman Forever. So that should be very interesting because Jenny will be joining us to talk about that, as well as Tim Tabala, Mr. Swiss Army Knife of the Pop Culture right. Bros. Uh, he, he'll be on it. I'm sure it'll be a battle royal when we get to Batman Forever. We'll also be talking about the latest episode of Peacemaker, as well as Superman and Lois and Batwoman and Naomi um, <clears throat> and DC's Legends of Tomorrow. So come uh, and unless any crazy trailer drops that's comic related, mm -hmm. that should be our, our slate. So can't wait. Awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I cannot wait to talk about Batman Forever with you guys. I get so many thoughts. I still have to so, watch it again. I'm prepping. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, I'm, I'm so glad I get to watch it again. <laughs> Oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I, God. I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I, well, I started it last night, and then I finished it today. And I'll tell that story in all of its glory on oh, Saturday. <laughs> but I'm speaking of Tim... Oh, we forgot. You know, no, Usa, right? Um, speaking of Tim Tabala, you can join him in his own show, Shoot the Sith, where he covers everything Star Wars, not just uh, the shows and the television, but also... The culture he's very huge into right now the uh the book of boba fett uh ed is guest spotted on there i i come on every now and then drop some act bar fat bars uh so i'm not sure exactly when that's dropping so you can check out the website that'll be coming out uh we also got the a to z program with eric uh which tim is the q branch of that uh where they literally cover everything from Abraham to Zachariah. Wow. I went biblical. You did? I went biblical. Wow. And Ginny, Ginny, just so you, you just so you understand the, the joke between Ed and I is I got I, I, I spent one night watching uh like binge watching Doctor Who and just coming up with as many A to Z things that I could to promote the A to Z Eric show. Uh, so I literally have this whole list here I'm working through. So every time we get there, Ed kind of waits because he's like, all right, I got to see what he has now. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of my favorite parts of the show. So much time. Oh, so much time on your hands. Yes. Okay, I I, I try to bring value wherever I am, guys. <laughs> um, we also got the Just Too Sweet show. Speaking of Eric and uh, Tim, they're covering the uh, the wrestling. I think they've been doing, they've been diving into some old wrestling, but also there's a Royal Rumble coming up, isn't there? Did yeah. I see that correctly? I know, I know that, yeah. I so, oh, yeah. okay. Are you a wrestling fan, Jenny? I am. I'm like, but I fell off and now I only catch up when I like uh, reviews and like when it's on TV if I'm watching. So, oh, but I'm, 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 I'm hip to what's going on. Okay. And I'm hip. I'm cool. I'm hip. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so uh if you're interested in wrestling and you want to hear about the uh the royal rumble coming up you could join just too shrinks just too sweet uh if you're into uh oh no base not baseball season i made a note of this but uh, we're, but, we're locked out still so unfortunately <laughs> yeah we are locked out of baseball but you know if you once baseball season starts up if you're a met fan we gotta put it in the books with boss man farachi we got the empire 161 show with uh this man right here ed and his guest host lisa uh, and yeah, good times are had by all. I believe Jader and Kyle came back with the Scream movie. Uh, so if you're interested in getting the Scream review, you can check out Jader and Kyle on the network. Um, and I believe that's all the plugs we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
with that being said, guys, I guess uh, for England, guys. <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night. <laughs>